Hey everybody, how's it going out there? The Tankster here. How are you my brothers and sisters? Sound like dude love there, didn't I? My brothers and sisters, I love you. Hashtag dude love if you remember that. So, check it out. I mentioned briefly in a couple videos and all that about this newest black hole. I went down in my collecting and I'll tell you how it all got started uh, back when right after Thor Ragnarok came out uh, Hunter D my boy crazy H he uh, bought the Hulk uh, diamond select gallery Thor Ragnarok uh, it's like a, they're like statues uh, they're like uh, I guess nine inch I believe but man that thing is awesome and looks awesome so he'd asked for a couple more for Christmas and I got him the Thor and Valkyrie to go along with the Hulk and he's got a couple other and I think he has Aquaman and that but man they just look fantastic and uh, I got to talk to a couple people about them and uh, my buddy Big Dub was one of them and wanted his advice on them so uh, I just got to looking on eBay at them and I noticed that like a lot of the ones on there were going far less than retail. You know, sometimes like only about a third retail. So I started playing eBay game to get some because I wanted something for our living room that wasn't like figures but was like figures and kind of, you know, looked uh, classy and stuff. So I started duck. Uh, collecting them and I've been I've been working on them a few months now uh, but I've gotten a nice collection and like I said most of them I paid way less than uh, you know what they're going for uh, so we've been wanting to do a video to uh, kind of showcase them and uh, show you guys uh, what they're all about and you know see if any of you guys out there have any of them or if uh, it'd be something some of you guys would like to get into uh, you know, my thing is, too, I mean, there seems like there's big, this big, I don't know, difference of opinion between, like, statue collectors and uh, figure collectors. But, man, I th you know, it's pretty much one and the same, I think, once, especially when you're an adult, because, you know, most of the time you're just going to pose your fig and, you know, put it on a shelf anyway. So, you know, a statue is just cool. You just ain't going to be able to pose it any different than you get it. But, uh... I really want to take the time to show you guys collection. I really am liking and enjoying uh, uh, getting these. They got several more coming out uh, this year. I don't know if I'll be picking many more up because I'm getting out of room uh, unless I try to figure something else out. But uh, pretty much concentrate on like the Avengers and the uh, Netflix Marvel characters. So yeah, man, got a bug on me, man. Get off. So yeah, man, check it out. Crazy H loves to showcase our collections. So uh, when we get him here later, I'm going to turn the video over to him and let him show you them. It's funny, he's take, he takes people on tours of the house and everything all the time whenever you know we have anybody stop over. My friends, his friends, whatever. So he really enjoys doing that. And, and he has such a... Like, Hunter has kind of a... Uh, a, a, a memory he remembers everything you know uh it's, it's like you almost photographic i guess but uh, you know like like if he has a class he remembers little, everything from a lecture and everything and he really doesn't study at hard and he's an honor student so you know we're blessed by that but he has a vast knowledge he reads constantly a vast knowledge of you know comics and characters and star wars and you know all the kinds of stuff we love so he's a good person to uh you know show you to you guys as well so i'm gonna get off here uh you guys enjoy seeing the collection i'm gonna turn it over to my boy crazy h and uh he'll be graduating here very shortly i'm kind of crazy about it but it's it's you know the circle of life man i'm gonna turn it over to him let him show you guys and you know Comment below what you think about them. Uh, you know, hopefully this won't be too long a video. I know sometimes we can get going and they can 
go on a while. So hopefully this won't be too long a video. And you guys will check it out and let me know your thoughts. Uh, so, uh, just a reminder, do that one act of kindness this week and help make a difference in somebody's life. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to my boy Crazy H. See you guys. Hello everybody, this is Crazy H, the craziest of all H's. And I've been given the task, the ever so daunting task of touring the gallery collection marble statues that my father, Mr. Tank, has been acquiring over the last few months. So we're going to just jump right into it. The first one here we have is uh, this really nice Doctor Strange. So you can see these things are very shockingly detailed well in spite of the materials they're made of and the uh, you know, like, for the price, they're for really good price statues. Um, so this would be the one of the first of the Infinity War ones that we've acquired. Um, Doctor Strange is personally one of my favorite heroes in the MCU currently. Um, I'm actually kind of am excited for his sequel. Uh, you know, all the crazy stuff that could be in store, you know. He was really good in uh, Infinity War. I'd say that he was one of the best... Like him and Thor and Iron Man were the best three in that movie in terms of the heroes, even though it was Thanos' movie. But uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what the MCU has in store for him, you know, now that he's played the really big part in Endgame. Of course, all of you who have seen it at this point, you know, know what that is. For all of you who haven't, what are you doing? Go see it. And then next to him, we get this Infinity War Captain America. I personally love his uh, vibranium shields that he uses that he gets in Wakanda. Very cool. Um, and the sort of toned down battle worn nature of his costume is also a really nice touch. Um, he's my favorite Marvel character without a, without a shadow of a doubt. He's been a role model to me my entire life. You know, I felt I could relate to Captain America the most of any of them. Um, he's just overall a really good character, you know, and just a character that I feel like the, we shouldn't take for granted. You know, this is why I always say don't underestimate geeky movies or geeky, you know, pop culture, whatever. Just there's important morals and lessons that can be learned from these characters and the stories that they tell. And I think Captain America is a great example of that. And for anyone asking, there, there is in fact America's ass. So I'm moving on next. We have Thor. This is one of the core of the Infinity War statues. The lightning effects on him are absolutely sick. How they just kind of swarm around him as he, you know, summons his lightning. There's Stormbreaker up there, which is massive. I was at a... Uh, Marvel showcase a few years, or um, a few days ago up at Walmart, and they had a replica of Stormbreaker, in it, and the thing was huge. I mean, I'm talking like it could like be as tall as a person, another person, like a child. It was insanely large, and I really want it now. <laughs> Unfortunately, they haven't made any official replicas. Um, Thor is probably one of my other favorite characters right now. In the MCU, he's definitely had probably one of the best character arcs of any of them. And his journey, you know, how much he's lost, you know, what he's learned from his hardships, you know what I mean? Like, he's just a very well-developed character, you know, and it was a shock to see someone who lots of people thought wasn't going to be able to be pulled off very well, you know, become such a fan favorite and such a relatable guy. You know, um, he's very cool. Lightning effect on his eyes there. Very nice also. Um, but I'm going to be interested to see what, you know, the next phase in Marvel has in store for him as well. Now behind him, we actually don't have, this is not a gallery statue. This is just a um, Hulk figure we kind of have standing in. I have the gallery Hulk from Thor Ragnarok downstairs in my room. Um... Which is a very nice statue as well. But we have this standing in. Um, 
I can't really say too, too much about Hulk. Unfortunately, he's on my lesser side of the Marvel characters, but um, Ruffalo did an amazing job playing Bruce Banner. You know, he's very good in the part, and Hulk's had an interesting journey as well. Um, I hope it gets delved into a lot more. I'm very excited for this She-Hulk TV series that's been announced. She's one of my favorite comic characters that hasn't you know really been adapted into any like watchable media of any kind so I just kinda like that dynamic of that idea you know you have this woman who's you know strong and you know like the physical sense when she turns into She-Hulk but also strong in like the mental you know sense whenever she has to be like a lawyer and you know she gets the job done and stuff I think that's a really interesting thing that's gonna play into her part you know and it'll be exciting to see Mark Ruffalo you know Redonning his role as Bruce Banner to you know, support that. It's very exciting. So next up, we've got the Infinity War Black Widow, another very cool one. Um, this costume choice and hair choice they uh, chose for her was particularly interesting. I remember seeing the trailers for the first time and really shocked that they made her blonde after having her, you know, a uh, redhead all this time. That's one of the things I love about the Marvel movies is how there's so many costumes and how they change them for each movie, you know, to, and it just seems like the more they've done the movies, the more they've been able to hammer home the costumes and make them look even more, you know, like the comic characters realistically than thought. Like, just thinking about Captain America over there, you know, it amazes me how he started off looking very dorky in some of the early Marvel movies and around you know, the later ones, they've actually managed to make his costume work, you know, in a sense. As for Black Widow herself, I'm excited for the, um, solo movie coming out with her. Hopefully it's a good prequel, you know. It's cool, you know, that Scarlett Johansson's going to be producing it and playing the part, so I think it's important we all wish good luck to her, you know, that she, you know, does some really cool stuff with this character. You know, she's only someone we've really gotten alluded to things in her past, we've never really delved into it, and I think there could be a lot of interesting potential there. You know, she's got this cool weapon to her electronic staff. Um, but, yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting story they're going to have to tell, you know. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And then, to finish up this shelf, we have finally this Iron Spider with his uh, very cool spider legs surrounding him. I actually really like this kind of suit, um, how it looks. It's kind of got the same nanotech as the Iron Man ones, um, does. But it's very cool. I'm glad that we finally got a guy playing Spider-Man who can be Spider-Man. I mean, yeah, he maybe he's a little bit on the younger side, but he does an amazing job playing this part. Um, Tom Holland, and looking forward to Far From Home, see what he's got in store for us there, you know, but it's just, it's nice to have, like, you know, we're in, it's amazing that we're living in an era where everything's been casted so well, and everybody's, like, in such a, they play their part and do it justice so amazingly that you can't picture anyone else, you know, playing those parts really well, particularly everybody on this whole shelf here, like, just like in general it's it's really amazing um so yeah he's gonna be really cool um and then i guess kind of ominously looming all over them here we have what's i believe he was one of the very first ones we got was this uh thanos um gallery collection gauntlet and play there you know there's this kind of bodysuit definitely one of the best marvel villains with an interesting uh, motive driving him in the movies, you know, opposed to the comics, but, um, yeah, he was very, very well written, well done, well performed by Josh Brolin, um, very excited to see him play out in these movies, Infinity War was very much his movie, um, and to see how kind of, like, his agenda changed over time after he... You know, each time something would happen that would, you know, cause him to reconsider what he was doing, you know. Um, 
The villains like this always interest me, the ones that have seemingly, like, noble intentions, but just, um, have, you know, really nuts ways of wanting to achieve them, and, you know, I think that makes it really interesting, like, questions to ask, you know, what to say. But yeah, overall, like, him and, like, some of the more recent Marvel villains have been particularly good. I'd argue even that that's when Marvel movies themselves started to get really, really good. Not that they weren't bad already, but I just mean, like, really suburb. So, I'm just glad that we're, you know, it's finally getting in the air where everything's reached a peak and everything's just really amazing right now. And Thanos is, you know, exemplifies that greatly. And then moving on over here from them, we kind of have these two displayed together. This Ant-Man and Wasp. Um, that we got. Uh, the giant penny feature on Ant-Man's base is particularly cool. And I always liked their costumes as well in this in this movie. They, um, there's a Marvel Legends Ant-Man helmet at GameStop right now that I really, really want. Um, because I'm more of a co replica collector a lot of the times. Um, but it was interesting to see, you know, how far Scott's come as a character, you know. You know, he went from being the criminal, and now, you know, he was, you know, redeeming himself. He's protecting people. Not that he did any horrible, horrible crimes, but still. And then, you know, Evangeline Lilly is, you know, kicking butt as Hope Van Dyne. Um, I actually have a weird liking of the Ant-Man movies. Like, these two work really well together. Michael Douglas is amazing in, in them. Um, yeah, they're good. And, of course, Luis is just lovable in his two uh, buddies. Or the Wombats, as Michael Douglas called them. Um, but I would really look forward to seeing these two work together more. Paul Rudd is amazing as this character. His comedy works so well with Ant-Man as Scott Lang. Um, he's very cool. You know, and he kind of represents the audience in a way. He's probably one of the more, like, really, really relatable dudes. Because he's just an average guy who just kind of gets roped into all this superhero stuff you know he makes that you know very clear throughout the movies that he's just along for the ride and he doesn't really know you know what all these super people's deal is so it's nice to see the two of them and now we're gonna glide over them past the mysterious stripes to some of the coolest superheroes ever invented the guardians of the galaxy so in the center of course there's Peter Quill, Star Lord, with his neat um this jetpack feature, very cool. Um, and then over here we have Rocket and Gamora, who are personally my two favorites of the Guardians. Her very nice sword. Um, and then on the left, of course, there's Drax, looking very cool, and little baby Groot at the base. Now, it's become apparent to me, of course, I was a bit younger at the time, so I didn't really know, that a lot of people did not think these this first movie of theirs was going to be very good. They thought it was just going to be very stupid, and that it was going to be, you know, just, you know, a waste of time and money. But it turned out, James Gunn and this amazing cast delivered to us. Um, I'd say I like the second one a bit more, because it has a bit more of a unique story. The first one kind of felt like stuff I've seen a bit before, you know, just with the Guardians sort of label over it. I mean, amazing soundtrack in the movies, the design's always on point, like up there with like Star Wars when it comes to like space movies. Um, and just overall, you know, very good collection of characters. Um, it still ceases to amaze me how Bradley Cooper makes Rocket so believable as a character. You know, like, you forget that he's even a raccoon half the time, or whatever he is, um, and put so much humanity into him. And I just, like I said, I'd say Gamora is one of the best acted, you know, there. And then Drax, he's just hilarious, you know, with his jokes, but also he's, he's kind of, I heard him described as the Gimli of the group, which I think is a very accurate description of him. He's, uh, you know... He's got a very comedic side, you know, and is there for the laughs, but he also has this very loyal and noble aspect to him, you know, of how he's constantly sought to avenge the death of his family, you know. And Groot, I mean, come on, everybody loves Groot. And, you know, Star-Lord just is an interesting 
idea um, for a character. He's, I mean, he's one of my least favorites, just mainly because he's kind of just like a man-child. No offense to him, but, you know, Chris Pratt plays the part amazing. All of them play their parts very, very well. And I'm very excited to see what Guardians 3 has in store for us. Hopefully trying to look for Gamora in the Soul Stone, I hope so. I want, I want them to bring her back, you know, uh, for, you know, so everyone can be together again. Uh, like, I'd look to see the reunion between her and Peter after what happened. But yes, they're very cool. The Guardians of the Galaxy are. And now we get down to the final portion of the statues. We This is predominantly the Netflix... Uh, Heroes, which unfortunately I don't know too too much about, apart from what I've heard. I know I should, especially in the case of Daredevil. I've heard Daredevil is very, very good. So I should watch it, and I'll get around to it someday, I'm sure. Before I get into them, we'll go ahead and get the odd ones out on the side. We have this. This is actually not a gallery statue. This is a, a Marvel vs. Capcom Iron Man that we currently have in place of the actual statue that you can get um and you know iron man's you know gone on the journey um like the ultimate journey you know what i mean mean like and what an amazingly well cast part robert downey jr has crushed it for years now i mean it's only really like an it's really nuts when you can say in a series of movies that are extremely well cast, he's you, there's one that like is beats everybody, and he's one of them. Like there's only a few other people. Like Hugh Jackman is Logan, and Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. Like they're the only other really superheroes that have been so so become their characters that it's like impossible, you know, to see anyone else playing them. Um, I was thinking about it earlier today, I hope they do. There's some minor characters that they haven't done, like, for these, that I hope they do, like, such as, like, War Machine, Bucky, Falcon, some of them, like that. Uh, it would be cool to see them done in this style. But, um, yes, Iron Man is truly amazing. He's, you know, uh... You know, there's such a tribute to him now among the fans. It's just a testimony of his great work, you know, Robert Downey Jr.'s work, you know, giving this character, like, ultimate justice. I really am glad, you know, that the Iron Man we got was him. And it's been him for all this time. So, you know, very, you know, well done on his part. And then over here, we've got another extremely well-cast one, this Loki, that's an Iron Studios Loki from Thor Ragnarok. They've done uh, Thor and Hela and Hulk and Valkyrie for the set, and it'd be really nice to get them and complete them someday. Um, and Loki's had a really interesting arc as well. He went from being one of the only really good Marvel villains that we had to now like a sort of beloved anti-hero, really. Um, and I'm interested to see what this new show is all about with him, if it's going to be on the streaming service, you know, what kind of story Loki's going to have to tell, you know, and when exactly we think it's going to take place. Um, with his death in Infinity War, I know that uh, we'll have to, you know, see what becomes of him. Um, like, he was particularly good at Thor Ragnarok as well. It's one of my favorite Marvel movies, probably my most, actually probably my favorite one. But he's, Tom Hilston just relishes in this role. He just totally evokes the character, you know, extremely well. And very entertaining to watch, perform. Like, in every single one he's been in, he's, you know, stolen the scenery, practically, in every scene that he was in. Um, so, it was really, it's really cool that he was, like, the first 
good, good villain that we got, and I always liked that the first Avengers took after the comics and made him the villain in the first time they all came together. Um, that was a really happy thing to see. So yeah, Loki's great. Um, and then moving on to the Netflix ones, I can't really say too much about them, as I said, but I'll kind of glaze over them. You know, Jessica Jones, what I've seen of her, very interesting stuff with her. Um, you know, I just, like, it kind of amuses me that she's just like this very angry, strong girl that walks around punching and kicking things and people, you know, very kind of funny idea but also you know very complicated in her character's case and conflicted um you know in the defenders and then iron fist i mean i heard you know stuff oh you know, he was loris tyrell here is whiny you know he was whiny's loris tyrell so what do you expect um i grew up with iron fist and uh luke cage on the ultimate spider-man cartoon when i was a kid um i always thought they were an interesting pair you know, duo, Luke Cage is back there. He's, you know, he's got an interesting story as well with his skin. I always, I heard the stories I like that, and he did his character's flashback that they actually honored and made him look like the classic 70s look. You know, despite the, um, how cheesy it may have looked. And Sweet Christmas is officially one of my favorite phrases uttered by anybody. I know that the most complaint I've heard about it is that the music, because of the time the comics came out, the music used in the show can be sub somewhat of an annoyance. Um, but yeah, him and Iron Fist here, they're a interesting pair that can, you know, do interesting stuff. Iron Fist story, I remember, from what I remember, was very weird, how he got his power and whatnot. So hopefully they, you know, elaborated on, him, on it more and give him crazy stuff in the future. I know all these things have been cancelled for now, um, and then back there we've kind of got these three go together, the Punisher and Elektra and Daredevil, all, again, all very interesting characters, you know, the blind lawyer, and you got the, the assassin, the, you know, the, I guess the most challenged of the three is the Punisher, um, you know, the vengeful character, he was kind of like the John Wick before there was John Wick in a way, um, and from what I've heard, he's done a phenomenal job playing his part. You know, people, I think it's important to also take TV into consideration when talking about these things. Because um, the people in TV shows, you know, we've seen it, you know, think just Game of Thrones at the top of my head. But, um, you know, that characters can be done just as much justice in a TV show than they can a movie, you know, and just because they're not a, you know, well, you know, known Hollywood star doesn't mean that they can't, the right person can't be found to play the part. Um, personally, I'd like to see more stuff with Elektra. I'd like to see her story done a lot more justice and delved more deeply into, because I think there's interesting stuff, you know, with her fight, you know, and her time in the hand and fighting them or and fighting with them. You know, Daredevil's got some interesting stuff that can be explored and you know let's just hope the Punisher finds peace someday who knows if it'll ever happen so yeah that's the uh, Defender shelf and I did just forget there is one other shelf that we have we're gonna sweep along the floor here down to here where we have a Black Panther cell shelf set up um, there's actually another Black Panther you can get that goes with these the two on the left here that kind of has more of a battle for Wakanda. Um, I hope we get an Okoye someday. She'd be a nice addition. Um, I mean, starting here, we got this Killmonger. Again, another very good Marvel villain. Who, again, also kind of had like a... Like, you could see where the guy was coming from. He had like a legit argument. It's just that because he wanted to go full blazing guns, it made him too radical. And they had to stop him. His gold outfit's particularly nice, as are his weapons. Um, but yeah, much like Thanos and, you know, Hela, Ego, Vulture, they were all very well done, well acted and casted. Um, it was nice to see them. Black Panther was a very interesting movie, uh, for a lot of reasons. 
I mean, I gotta give credit for costumes here again. I have, I have a big costume thing, but they doubt did themselves in their movie with this movie with the detail and colors and patterns. Um, very cool. Next, then we got Shuri and her really cool uh, arm guns. I really like those. And she's a certain an interesting character. She has one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard, where she said, you know, in the movie, she said, just because something works doesn't mean it can't be improved, or something like that. And I thought that was a really clever line. Um, and, you know, it's. I hope we get to see more of her in the future. You know, maybe becoming another Black Panther or something someday. But although I can't, I gotta say that this guy here is, you know, a, an OG, as it were. Like, he's really good. Chadwick Boseman's really good as Black Panther, and I'd love to see him stick around as the character for a while. Another another design thing I love here is this, uh, the purple running through his suit, the kinetic energy. I thought that was a really cool idea of how he can get hit and then harness it and use it against his enemies at times. He's in this really dynamic pose here. And then we also got this, the wreckage is set up in a way that if you were to put a light underneath it, the flames would look as if they were, you know, lit up flames. Um, but yeah, I'm also curious to see what Black Panther has in store for his uh, future in the MCU. So, that's gonna about wrap it up. Very cool statues, for one. Um, I'd recommend getting them. Pretty, you can find them at pretty good prices, you know, well worth your time, and it's an, it's an easy way to collect all your favorite heroes, I guess you could say. And then as for just a broader statement in the Marvel Universe, with Endgame being released, it's reached like a high point in, in its run. And it's a bit of peak in its career. And I was blown away by it. Just to, you know, put my thoughts here really quick. Um, there's too much to talk about. But, uh, you know, overall it was an amazing experience. And a real testament to what so many people have spent the last ten years working so hard on to create something that the fans out there. And knowing that it was made by fans to do that, like... Is really it means a lot to me as somebody who has loved these movies since I was a kid, and um, you know like has you know is going to continue to experience them from now into my future, you know, and I think it's important you know just we you know thank all of the actors and the crew who crews and directors, all the people who've worked behind the scenes to bring these movies to life for everyone, you know, and to acknowledge how hard they've worked for us, and, you know, to really give us some entertainment that's worth seeing. Um, I know there's people out there, it's crazy to think there's people out there who still haven't seen a single Marvel movie, but if you're one of those people, go start it, you won't regret it, you know, don't let the idea that it's a, it's, it's a comic book movie get in the way of you enjoying it. Because it, in the end, it gives you great characters that you can sympathize with, understand, and gives you, you know, movies that can teach you, you know, timeless life lessons. Um, but, yeah, that's the collection. You know, I hope you all enjoyed it. And as I said, just, you know, pay, pay your respect to these people, you know, and wish them luck on their careers to come and their you know, films or whatever they decide to do with their lives. Um, but, you know, so I just want to say thank you and to them, and thank you to you for watching this. And I hope you all enjoy your day, whatever you are, whoever you are.